Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. I am your host, Jessica Fisher, and today we are talking about prebiotics versus probiotics. Um, I've been wanting to do this episode for quite a while because I I struggled with this for, I don't know what it was. I had like a mental block about the difference in prebiotics and probiotics for a very long time. And this episode is not going to be terribly long, but I wanted to address a few things just to clarify for everybody out there, the difference in prebiotics and probiotics. And a little bit on how to use them with your pets because every animal is different, right? First of all, we have different species of animals. We have dogs, we have cats. There there are other pets in our household, but that's what I tend to focus on are dogs and cats. But then every single individual animal is different, is an individual. And there are individual differences in our animals to consider when we are choosing prebiotics and probiotics. So let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so prebiotics and probiotics. I th- it, if anything, you've definitely heard of probiotics. And it, it's like a it's a buzzword right now, <laughs> um, especially for human health, but also for dog health. If you're in the dog community, you've definitely heard of probiotics. If you're in the cat community, you may or may not have. Things tend to reach the cat community later than the dog community, but you know, I digress. Why it is so important is because over 80% of the immune system comes from the gut. And this is true of us as humans, our dogs, our cats. So a normal digestive tract where over 80% of our immune system comes from is going to contain both what we call good and bad bacteria bad bacteria being pathogenic bacteria. Now, when a gut is healthy, when your um, gut system is healthy, it helps the whole body not only stay healthy, but actually thrive. And the idea is not to get rid of all of the bad bacteria. There's this relationship with the bacteria in your body that as long as you are, the good bacteria is flourishing, you are healthy and thriving. If the bad bacteria is flourishing, chances are you are not healthy or thriving. And there are a lot of things that can damage our gut environment, um, causing it to become unbalanced, causing, causing the bad bacteria to outweigh the good bacteria. And this is where we see a lot of chronic disease, whether we're talking about humans or dogs or cats. Um, some of these things include antibiotics, uh, NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, as well as steroids. Overvaccination, which we've talked about quite a bit. Processed foods, we've also talked about quite a bit. Stress, um, anything with lectins as well, as far as food is concerned. So we're talking about grains and beans. So while I'm not saying don't ever feed grains or beans, there certainly are circumstances in which that may be okay. Um, it certainly shouldn't make up a majority of anyone's diet. <laughs> um, so what we know is that these things can cause bad bacteria to outweigh the good bacteria. It overwhelms the good bacteria and the gut really, really starts to not be in such a great shape, which affects the entire body. Because again, over 80% of the immune system is in the gut. So what happens is let's first, let's first talk about prebiotics and probiotics. So Probiotics are what we call the good bacteria or the friendly bacteria, and they are like the, the, well, the gut's defense system, but in the sense that they are your gut's defense system, they are your entire body's defense system because the 80%, over 80% of the immune system resides in the gut. So 
when we realize that probiotics are the good bacteria, according to Julianne Lee at Adored Beast, probiotics are the gatekeepers that stop intruders and keep the mucosal lining healthy. It's also paramount in converting and metabolizing our food into vitamins and bioavailable nutrition. That's really interesting because we need a thriving gut biome with large numbers of good bacteria, which are these probiotics, to actually be able to utilize the nutrients from our food appropriately. So she says, for example, when you eat a carrot, packed with vitamin A, C, K1, calcium, iron, biotin, potassium, and more. (laughs) There's a very complex process that happens to allow your body to use that nutrition. And the facilitation of this process is one of the important jobs of the friendly or good gut bacteria. Uh, Julianne Lee always says, (laughs) you can feed the absolute best nutrition on the planet, but without a healthy gut, much of that nutrition goes to waste along with the time, money, and concern you spend getting the right food for your dog's optimal health. So yes, it is incredibly important that we feed the absolute best foods that we can to our pets, but we need to make sure that their gut health is in a good place so that your your pet can actually get all of that wonderful nutrition from the food that we are feeding. In contrast to that, so we've been talking about probiotics. Prebiotics are the food source for the beneficial bacteria already present in the gut. So the good bacteria in your gut, what we know is we call probiotics, they and imp- They have a very, very important function in our body to break down the foods that we eat and help our body utilize the nutrients in those foods. Now, those probiotics, those good bacteria in our gut, they need to eat too. And that's where prebiotics come into play. Prebiotics are the food for the probiotics, the good bacteria in our gut. So one thing that I found out, one thing that I kept seeing over and over when I was researching this is that there are quite a few people out there that either believe or ask the question at least, if we feed prebiotics to help the probiotics thrive and flourish in our system, to feed the probiotics in our system, won't that also feed the bad bacteria in our gut? And Actually, the answer is no, from what I have found out. According to in Clover Research, no. Prebiotics do not, they do not have the ability to actually break the cell wall in the bad bacteria that reside in our gut. So they are actually only designed to feed the good bacteria or the probiotics in our gut, which is good because we want our probiotics thriving and flourishing and way outnumbering the bad bacteria in our gut, that's how we thrive and flourish because that's how our immune system in our gut, which again, over 80% of our immune system and our dog's immune system and our cat's immune system resides in the gut. So we want the probiotics, the good bacteria to thrive and flourish. Now, what's also really interesting about probiotics, about good bacteria is that it is going to be different. There are so many, 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 like I can't even fathom the number of different strains of bacteria in existence. <laughs> not not just all bacteria, but even just in good bacteria, even in probiotics, there are so many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of strains of bacteria that if you take three animals and you're in your same household, there is a chance some would say a good chance that those three animals are not going to have the same probiotics flourishing in their system. Now, living in the same household, eating the same foods, yeah, they may have quite a bit in common, but they are not going to be identical. And if you were to take, you know, four different dogs at a dog park that you meet and test what strains of bacteria are in their gut, they are going to be wildly different. So every animal, every human, every dog, every cat, are they're all going to be different in so much as what 
bacteria actually flourishes in their system. What's really interesting, again, from in clover research, I'm, I'm going to read this. Each animal has his or her own unique preferred strains of probiotics. The preferred strain is the one that will be at the highest level when the animal is healthy. If there are three dogs playing in a park, it's unlikely that any of them will have the same preferred strain of probiotics. Think of our animals' digestive systems like vehicles. While they all take fuel to run, there are certain types of fuel that work best for particular vehicles, whether that's high-grade gasoline, diesel, coal, or electricity. To help that vehicle run, you need to give it the fuel that its body prefers. So... This is kind of leading into rotating probiotics for our pets. Rotating both probiotics and prebiotics are always a good, good idea. We don't want to just keep the same one going over and over and over and over again. That is actually not going to lead to a healthy diversity of good bacteria in our gut. And in fact, if we continue to feed the same probiotic over and over and over and over again for a very long extended period of time, uh, and that time frame is going to vary depending on the animal, depending on the individual animal, it can actually lead to bad bacteria taking over. So we definitely want to rotate our pre and probiotics that we feed to our pets. So again, uh, going back to the in clover research, Prebiotic supplements work to quickly shift the balance of beneficial bacteria to a healthy, natural state. Prebiotics will double your pet's friendly bacteria every 20 minutes. So in just three hours, 1,000 bacteria become over 5 million. This targeted feeding allows the beneficial bacteria to multiply, thrive, and line the intestinal walls while undesirable bacteria starves, has nowhere to attach, and flush right through the system. So the next question that people tend to ask is, okay, now I get that prebiotics and probiotics, I, I understand the difference. I understand that prebiotics feed the probiotics, which are the good, friendly bacteria in the gut. So how do I, what do I, what do I give to my dog? How do I give them prebiotics and probiotics? Well, we t we've already talked about the fact that we should rotate. So there isn't one out there. And not only is there not just one out there that, that I or anyone else should be recommending. Of course, if you are um, dealing with a company, they're going to recommend theirs. But so we should be rotating. But also what works for one animal may not work for another animal. So you may have four different dogs and two of them you know, are flourishing, they're thriving with one type of probiotic and the other two are not. So you're going to want to figure out what is going to work best for your pet. But I can give you a couple of starting points. Mercola is one company that, I mean, just across the board, almost everyone that I have con been in contact with or that I have read reviews on, um, going through social media posts, a lot, a lot, a lot of dogs do really, really well with Mercola products. There's a Mercola probiotic and a Mercola digestive enzymes. Mercola is spelled M-E-R-C-O-L-A. So if you just type in Mercola Healthy Pets on, you know, your preferred search engine, you're going to find that that's where, that's Dr. Karen Becker's home. Um, she is the world's most popular veterinarian. So if you don't know of her, uh, definitely look her up. She's an incredible, incredible human being. So the Mercola line of products are incredible. A lot of dogs really do well on them. Additionally, Adored Beast has quite a few, in fact, they have four different probiotics for dogs because, again, not every animal is the same and it's also good to rotate. They have Love Bugs, which is their kind of base blend that has 14 diverse strains with 30 billion colony forming units. 
CFUs is what you're going to see on the labels, colony, for, colony forming units. If you go to the Adored Beast website, they're going to say Love Bugs is ideal for minor health concerns like mild itching or tummy issues. It supports the gut, the immune system, and can be very helpful for allergies. So this is like a, you know, daily proactive health choice. And it's always best to be proactive than reactive, right? So we want to be proactive. Um, their second product is called Gut Soothe. This is something that they've started with the Love, Love Bug base and they have added to it. So that's a great option as well. Healthy Gut is their third one that they've added even more to. And then Phytos Flora. So Phytos Flora is really, really interesting because it is a species specific probiotic. And what they have done is they have actually scientifically isolated strains from canine feces, yes, they're talking about poop, of healthy dogs. And what that, what that they found is that the, what they have been able to isolate from healthy dogs helps other dogs really, really flourish. So that's kind of, I, I get it. I ended on a gross note, but all of these things are available to you. Of course, there are others out there. But these are some really, really incredible products. So I hope that this has helped you understand the difference in prebiotics and probiotics and also kind of giving you a place to start when looking for prebiotics and probiotics for your dog. Of course, there are there are lots out there. Um, I just wanted to give you a starting point. I don't ever want to make anybody feel like, you no, know, this is what you should use, period. And I don't know anything about you or your dog. That's not how I work. That's not how <laughs> anyone really should be working. Getting to understand the individual before providing specific recommendations is always the goal. But these are because I, I, I don't know your dog. Um, I wanted to give you kind of a jumping off point to start your own research and to see what is out there. That's the only reason why I mentioned Adored Beast and Mercola. Uh, but... Yeah, so that is that is the difference between prebiotics and probiotics. I hope this can help you. And again, being proactive is always better than being reactive. So adding these into your dog or your cat's food now and being proactive is going to be so incredibly beneficial for you moving forward, especially because we just never know. Sometimes sometimes antibiotics are necessary and we want to have a good base and a good, a good knowledge base of what works for our pet to help them through when things like that occur. Um, obviously, we know that when we use antibiotics, it is going to not only kill the bad bacteria, but also harm the good bacteria. So we want to be able to support our pet through that, get them on the other side, and just help them thrive through all of it. So I hope this was helpful. Please reach out to me on all the socials. Um, I, I hope to see you on Patreon. Patreon is, if you are unfamiliar with it, a platform, a social media platform where I can, I can get lots of extra content to you that I don't post anywhere else. It is, you can join my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Of course, I can't speak to other people's Patreons, but as little as a dollar a month. And what's really great about it is that it helps me continue to provide content like this to you and to other pet parents like you. And in, ad in addition to that, you get loads of behind the scenes and exclusive content. So it's, it's really a win-win, um, not just for you, but for all the other pet parents out there who need who need this kind of information. Also, if you haven't rated the podcast, I really hope you do so and share it with anyone you know who has pets who can really use the information that I provide in this podcast because that is going to be the best way for this podcast to get greater reach and to get out there to more and more pet parents. Thank you so much for being here. I do hope, please give your pets some extra love from me today. I hope it was helpful. And I, until next week, I'll talk to you then. Bye guys. Oh, oh.